Welcome to Golf and the Good Life, your guide to golf travel across the pond. I'm DJ Jones, joined by my friend and colleague, Connor Evers. Connor, as we are recording this, the golf travel season is just a couple of short weeks away, and that means that every single golfer with a trip on the books this year will soon have to deal with today's topic, and that's packing. <laughs> yeah, it's a funny topic for sure, but it's one that we receive a lot of questions on what we should bring, what we shouldn't bring, you know, stuff like that. Um, when it comes to obviously your, your golf clubs as well, and, um, and just kind of what goes into it. Uh, and also for the duration, you know, some trips are a little bit shorter and some are a little bit longer, but we're going to talk all about that. And uh, DJ, if you don't mind starting us off with uh, kind of the first topic what we'll talk about today. Yeah, absolutely. So we're going to walk through roughly eight or 10 uh, best practices. But the first and foremost uh, tip is to pack less. There is there is an old uh, adage when it comes to travel that you know when you get started in packing, uh, you should lay out all your clothes and all your money, and then you should take half the clothes and twice the money. <laughs> and that absolutely applies here. You know, every year we uh, in our post expedition surveys we ask our travelers, you know, what advice would you give to future H and B uh, travelers and without fail, I would say better than 80% of the time, what they say is pack less. You know, the thing to keep in mind is that, you know, in the British Isles in particular, it's cooler over there than it is here. The the mindset tends to be, well, I'm gonna need I'm gonna need an outfit for golf and then an outfit in the evening. And oftentimes that just doesn't end up being the case. You can either sometimes wear some things twice, you know, trousers or what have you. Or you might find yourself going straight from the golf course to your dinner spot. And so there, there wasn't a need to change. Um, and so those two things in particular cause a lot of folks to, to use less clothes than they anticipate. But then the other thing is to keep in mind, you're probably going to be buying golf shirts along the way. Yep. And so, you know, take half the number of shirts that you think you need buy some in the pro shop that you're going to be buying anyway, and then just work those into your uh, your attire throughout the trip. And it'll save you a whole bunch of space because you're probably going to need that space in the suitcase. Yeah, I'm a sucker for uh, a nice clean polo shirt or a uh, quarter zip across the pond with uh, <laughs> logoed with anything. But as you said perfectly, um, you know, you can wear a lot of things over again. And for example, when we, my dad and I toured, um, the, the, uh, the Giants Causeway. I was about to say clip some more, but the Giants Causeway. Um, I wore golf attire, and then we we played uh, we played the Valley Course at Royal Portrush afterwards. And again, Europeans are a little bit more posh than us. And when you show up to some of those tours, um, you know you don't feel again kind of out of place if you're wearing something a little bit nicer than what you may you may wear here stateside. So just keep that in mind that you can you can rewear stuff as well. And and uh, yeah, packing less is definitely key. It sometimes you look at it you're like is this going to be enough and you can buy stuff over there too. So um, the, the second kind of tip is, is waterproofs and you're definitely going to not want to leave without them. Um, having a nice quality rain jacket and, and pants that go along with it is definitely key. And DJ, you, you taught me well on our last trip to Ireland is you wore, you brought two, two sets and I will definitely be doing that going further um, because, you know, a lot of days, sometimes it, it, it rains and, and, you know, you have a wetsuit and sometimes, I mean, you can, you can dry them off in the evenings, but you know, a lot of times it is nice just to have a second fresh set. Um, and the other, the other big thing too, is to pack at least two pairs of golf shoes. You could have one day where it's a, it's a downpour mess and you only brought one pair of golf shoes and that second pair you didn't bring it could be a very uncomfortable round of golf where you're probably going to expect a few blisters on your, on your feet as well. If you don't have that second pair. So, so have a second pair of backup. Um, you know, you're, I like to say to the, the, the soil and the, the turf, it's, it's a lot harder and it, you, you want that even second pair, not even just for, for, you know, waterproof wise, but just want a second pair, just to enjoy it and your feet will, will definitely thank you. Um, the other other thing too is is for waterproof gloves. 
Um, those are key and you definitely don't want to leave without them. Uh, some of the courses across the pond will have them, but they're a pretty penny to pay just because a lot of people will need them. Um, and I wore them, I would say probably more than 50% of my rounds. And it's just super nice to have as well. Um, my favorite rain jacket and in, in suit is, is shoes. It's a great company. And, um, a lot of the clubs stateside now are, are continuing to get those. So uh, definitely talk to your PJ professional and that person can help you out if they have something in their shop, um, when you are planning this or something they can special order as well for you. So definitely don't leave with home without them. Waterproof gloves are this like mystery technology to me. <laughs> like I don't really understand how they work. Like they're they're absolutely useless when it's dry. There it's basically like, you know, got a, having a silk glove on your hand and then it gets the least bit wet and all of a sudden it's it's like you've got pine tar from playing baseball. I just <laughs> I, I just don't get it. But but Connor's right. Don't leave home without them. Um, the second rain suit thing, yeah, you know, rain gear in particular, look, it is not cheap. Just call it like it is. It's not cheap. So I wouldn't necessarily say get to, what was the brand you named? Um, Shoes. Shoes. Shoes mm -hmm. is... Is this the company that's like KJUS? It doesn't look at all like shoes, but it is shoes. <laughs> Correct. Yes. Okay, got it. Well, <laughs> you don't necessarily need that. You know, maybe get one nice one and, you know, uh, go to Amazon for the second one as backup, but but all will come in handy. And you're likely to experience, you know, the, there's an old saying, just like first, the thing with, with half the clothes and twice the money, well, in Scotland and Ireland, you might get all four seasons in a day. And so the important thing, for, you know, for the, for our next tip is packing layers. Generally, I wear a like a long sleeve uh, compression type shirt and a polo and a pair of slacks, and I'm good to go. And that usually is good for the day. But if you catch it on a day or a morning round where you know it's exceptionally cold, you can throw on another quarter zip on top of it. You can even throw a zip up, you know, one of those wind vests on top of that. Uh, the puffy vest or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> and, um, you know, and, and so you can layer up and you can layer down as it's needed, but you're probably going to find that throughout the round of golf, you're going to be putting stuff on and taking stuff off you know, multiple times. It's kind yeah. of a, it's kind of annoying and it can really be a pain when the wind is blowing and you're trying to put this rain jacket on and the wind's blowing it away. But the point being, you know, layers are your friend. So when you're packing and, and putting aside your clothes, kind of think through, um, you know, a few, a uh, few outfits, if you will, that will allow you to scale up and scale down as it's needed throughout the round. At Turnberry in November, it was early November. And to be honest, the first six, I think six or seven holes, it was cold, like low 40s degrees Fahrenheit. And it was raining down. I mean, my friend Larkin and I were the only two golfers on the golf course. So it was, it was just, it was, I'll be honest, it was miserable. I hate saying it, but it just, it just was, um, I mean, it's obviously a great golf course, but it was just the playing and it was, was extremely miserable, but we get to hole nine rainbow comes out. The rain goes away, start shedding layers, you know, the rain jacket and go away. The pants kind of staying on for, to keep warmth. Um, that's another thing is is to keep your rain pants on because that, that helps too. It's a little bit of warmth too, even if it's not raining. Um, but by the 11th hole, we were in quarter zips and pants. And then when we finished up, we were in pants and a polo. Like it, and that's, again, that's early November. So again, you just have to be prepared for the worst. And a lot of the times, you know, you either finish or end and 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 nice weather, which is good. So, <laughs> um, and then the other thing you're going to want to pack and to make sure is to have your handicap card. Um, a lot of the marquee courses um, will require this for you to show at check-in. Um, uh, for example, the old course will require this, the Muirfield will, um, Sunningdale will as well. Um, and there's different handicap requirements. So definitely keep a physical copy in, you know, your golf bag. If you have a valuables pouch inside your golf bag, place it in there, maybe even laminate it too, even in case it, it, it rains. Um, and also save a picture of it on your, on your phone, just as a backup, uh, screenshot it from the, the gin app or whatever, uh, handicap services that you use, just so you have, a again, another, another backup 
up. Um, and if you don't have a handicap, that's perfectly fine. And definitely talk to your PGA professional at the golf course you play or the state golf association that you belong to and um, get that that going because you don't want to leave home without it, just like uh, just like your rain gear. I was uh, last time I was in St. Andrews, actually, it was well, not last time, but it was the last time I did the uh, the singles queue at St. Andrews, uh, which we talked about in the last episode my heart just absolutely sunk for a guy that was a few paces and places in front of us because he, uh, he got, he'd waited all night, you know, for his time. And then they asked to verify his handicap and he didn't have a copy on his phone. He had no. a copy, he, he had a copy, uh, but it was in his bag and his bag. I don't remember if his bag was on site or not. I don't remember what the deal was, but he had to, he sprinted back. He got a copy. He brought it back, but gosh, I'm trying to, I'm just thinking, that is stress that I would not want to be dealing with before I tee it up uh, at the old course. But, um, you know, there is, I seem to have lined up a lot of these that have a, a, a catchphrase that goes along with it. But, you know, there is an old phrase that the player with the lightest bag gets the best caddy. And so when you're preparing your golf gear, leave the staff bag at home. No caddy across the pond wants to see that thing. And if they do, do not be surprised when they walk to the caddy shack and disappear for several minutes and come back with a beat up caddy bag or beat up carry bag that has probably been around since old Tom Morris. And they swap your clubs out and they tell you to grab three balls in your glove and off you go. And if you want to ensure that you have the most senior caddy, grab a Jones bag, grab something light, leave the big bag at home shed all your extra balls and all your extra stuff because the first thing that caddy's going to do is he's going to walk up to your bag and he's going to pick it up. And, and if he doesn't like what he feels, he's going to hand it off either to a caddy that you, that you may not want, or he's going to go through the motions of, of trading out the bag. And then you might be off to a bad start, uh, in terms of your player caddy relationship. So, <laughs> uh, so leave the staff back at home, pack the lightest bag you have, your, your, your scorecard may thank you for it uh, at the end of the day. Yeah. And as we've previously kind of talked about a little bit too, is the caddies across the pond definitely have a, a wittiness to them. We'll just say, so don't be alarmed if you get, um, you know, a little, uh, a little fun needling or jab at you. If you do show up with a, a cart bag or, uh, a, a staff bag, definitely, <laughs> definitely also talk to your PJ professional and see, um, I know DJ and I, we both use Jones bags. Um, we go across the ponds, one, one shoulder. Um, surprisingly, you can keep a lot of stuff in there and it's a bare minimum golf bag. It doesn't have legs to it. So it doesn't, doesn't stand up, but you put it back on the ground. Um, and it works great. It's super lightweight. And what's nice is when you are, um, you know, traveling across the pond, it does minimize some, some of that weight. So you can add some other things in your golf travel bag, um, as such as some of those logo polos or quarter zips that we talked about when you're going back home. So, um, definitely keep that in mind as well. And another thing to do when, when looking to pack is check the dress code of where you're going. Um, you know, some of the restaurants or um, occasions, you know, may require you to have something like a coat and tie, for example. Um, lunch at Muirfield will definitely require that. Um, as we talked, I was over there in October and was was able to have lunch at Muirfield. Then that is coat and tie, um, slacks, and in dress shoes. So that's another thing you're going to have to look at packing and and potentially, um, you know, ironing or or what have you before you attend those events. So your expedition planning manager, as well as the uh, the concert Sears uh, with with H and B will help with that and and make sure you're you're properly dressed for you know per occasion of depending on if you're at a club or just a, a nice restaurant um, for fine dining experience as well. So it's um and depending on where you're going and you know, for example if you're going to St Andrews and if you're going to be if you're going to be playing golf where this could potentially happen mm -hmm. another thing to consider is that you never know who you're going to get paired up with right. Back in 2021, I was in St. Andrews. I, I walked on at the new course and about 12 holes in, I discover that the gent that I'm playing with is a member of the RNA. And we get down to the end of the to 18T and he says, I wanted to invite you into the clubhouse for a pint. And I immediately kind of freak out a little bit, A, at the invitation, but B, because I didn't have a coat and tie. And of course, I knew that the RNA clubhouse required a coat and tie. 
turns out they have kind of modified their their rule a little bit and that the very the front uh you know the front room at the rna you don't have to have a, 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 a coat and tie you can go in and golf attire but if that wasn't the case gosh what what i would have missed out on and and so I'm not saying that you need to pack a coat and tie, you know, just, just, just on the whim that that happens, but it's something to consider. You know, if you, if you're going to be playing rounds at St. Andrews, where you're going to be walking up to say the new or the Jubilee, or even, you know, as a single at the old, you never know who you're going to meet. And so it, you know, always be prepared as they say, but <laughs> um, you know, one of the last things to, to talk, to talk about is just kind of the miscellaneous things that you don't want to forget Medication is obviously a, a, a biggie. Make sure you've got that in your carry-on. Plug adapters and charging cords. We're not going somewhere where you won't be able to find one, but you don't want to be scrambling at uh, Tesco trying to find a, a plug <laughs> adapter. Um, and then the other thing is take into account your itinerary. If you are going to be going from the airplane to the golf course, make sure that you have a, a, some of the local currency on hand. If you're, especially if you're going to take a caddy, ATMs are everywhere. You don't, you don't need to stock up for your whole trip before you leave, but in kind of the frenzy of just arrived, getting the luggage, getting to the coach, getting to the course and the excitement and so forth, it's easy to get distracted and forget that, oh man, I need cash to pay my caddy and rest assured your caddy does not want us dollars. So <laughs> if you're going to be going from the course to, or from the plane to the course, and you're going to have a caddy, especially you know, get a couple hundred pounds or what have you, just to make sure that you're covered uh, when you get there. Yeah, that's a that's a great point, DJ. Um, you know, something that you just don't don't think of. And you know, if you're going, if you have a rival day golf, and you know, you're going to want to be prepared and not having to deal with that on arrival and stuff like that. So, good good point. Um, the other thing to consider is your carry on. And there's always that you lay out all your clothes, you're figuring out what to pack, what to put in your golf travel bag, or what to put in maybe a checked luggage. And you definitely want to pack strategically when it comes to this. Take it from me, I have two family members, I won't mention their names because they may be listening, but they did a trip down the Caribbean last year and decided to put all their clothes in their checked bag. And I was absolutely furious and fuming when I heard this because the airline lost their luggage and it got to them on the second to last day of the trip. So in down the Caribbean, they had to, you know, buy clothing and stuff. So, you know, I, I, again, I can go on and on, but in your carry on, you're going to want to pack those, those medications, as DJ said, and you're going to want to pack a few days, two to three days worth of clothing and clothing outfits, no matter what you're doing from on the golf course to off, just in case if the airline misplaces your luggage, you are set and you've got stuff with you. Even, you know, make sure you've got comfortable shoes, um, you know, on the on the airplane. And again, just just stuff that you can get get you by for a few days, again, just in case the airline, um, you know, misplaces it, we want to, we want to prepare and you want to pack um, for the worst. That's kind of the biggest thing there. And in that that carry on as well, uh, you want to pack potentially, you know, a sleeve of golf balls or a couple, um, as we've said a few times, golf balls and just golf stuff over across the pond is is more expensive. Um, so, you know, pack some golf balls, gloves, um, and even maybe a pair of golf shoes. If you are checking your golf clubs and your golf clubs don't make it and you you know may have to rent a set, you also have those other things where you're ready to go. You've got shoes, you've got gloves, you've got golf balls, and, and you're ready to play. The only thing you need is that set of clubs. Again, we're preparing you for the worst. Um, so that's kind of the, the biggest thing there, um, you know, making sure that you're, you're packing, um, you know, in your carry-on in a few days worth of stuff, just in case that happens. So definitely take it from me. Don't put everything in your chucked checked luggage <laughs> rookie move exactly mom and, mom and dad or whoever it might <laughs> yeah. be like i said don't want to say any names but yeah <laughs> but, but you said something there that actually was uh was kind of spot on and that is to pack strategically you know whether it, whether it's your clothes or or your bag set yourself up for success minimize your exposure to these things and and that's going to definitely it, it, it may pay off you know, should the worst happen as far as that goes. But the other thing that you can do to be strategic is to ship your clubs. I almost always ship my clubs 
over. I, I generally bring them home with me on the plane, but my thinking is, look, I'm going all this way. I've got a tea time wherever I'm playing. The last thing that I want is for my clubs to not make it. I mean, my, my, I can get by without my, my luggage and my clothes. I can find clothes, what have you. But, but gosh, imagine preparing for a trip to the old course for like two years and you, and you don't have your sticks. <laughs> That's something we should all avoid. So the way that, we, you know, that you can do that and to hedge against that is to ship your clubs over. Um, you know, we generally recommend uh, luggage forward for the service. I've used them multiple times. Connor's used them. Everybody in the company has used them and, and many, many of our travelers and, and have had a great experience. There's a downside in that when you ship your clubs over, you know, you're generally doing that, you know, a week or so before your trip, meaning you're losing a, la a couple extra days of practice before the trip. If you're like me and you're just winging it when you get there anyway, and then, <laughs> then this isn't an issue, but, um, you know, so it's worth the, not only being away from the clubs for a couple of days, um, but it, but the investment, cause it is a little more expensive than say the checked bag, uh, fee with the airline and the customer service of, okay, if the clubs go awry, you know, they're reimbursing you for, for rentals or what have you. Um, all of that is, is worth the peace of mind. Uh, and the service from luggage forward or whoever you might choose for, for, to do it. But uh, it all goes back to being strategic and setting yourself up for success. And the, the, the best way to make sure that you're not standing on the first day at the old course with somebody else's clubs is to ship them over, in our opinion. Yeah, it's definitely, definitely worth the investment of paying the little bit extra to ship them over um, and just knowing that they're there, which is nice. But again, as you said, the only downfall and asterisk there is you do have to ship them a few days prior. We definitely don't have them also arrive on, you know, the day that you arrive, make sure they arrive a few days prior to that. Um, so again, that's a little bit less time with, with your, with your stick. So um, just something to consider there, but the time without the sticks and knowing that they're there and being able to play the old course, as you said, with them, um, that's, that's priceless for sure. And the, and the last thing I guess to add to that, uh, that's just come to mind. And that is, you know, and this isn't an issue for H and B travelers because you're not staying anywhere that this would be a, a, a problem. But if you are, if you're planning it on your own and you've booked an Airbnb or something of that nature, you're going to want to make sure that uh, you've got a place to send them. You 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 can't just send them to you know St Andrews Links. Uh, they they don't accept them, and and a lot of the clubs also won't accept them. So make sure you've got a uh, you know a clear destination that is accustomed to accepting uh, a golf bag and holding on to it for a few days for you. But otherwise, Connor, I think you know we have pretty well run through the list here. Anything uh, to add or that we might have missed along the way? No, I think we hit it all, DJ. Um, as as we said, pack less. That's the biggest thing. Um, you know, wear a lot of those clothes again. Make sure you you bring your rain gear, handicap card, all, all those good things we talk about. Um, but I think we hit it all. I think this is a, a great episode and um think it's it will be uh, worthwhile everyone listening to <laughs> kind of figure out what they need to bring and and, and what what to leave at home. Absolutely. Well, if you're out there listening and you're counting down to a trip, first off. We, uh, we hope that the countdown is a speedy one here, from here until uh, till your departure day. But if you wanted any further reading uh, on this or some other uh, pre-departure tips, visit the show notes. We're going to have some helpful links there. But otherwise, thank you as always for tuning in. Uh, we will be back with you uh, with another episode soon. But until then, we wish you plenty of golf at its finest and life at its best.